church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church corporate dance moves you can do whatever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or they put the Let's go. Here we go.
that when you worship God, something happens. The enemy has to flee. And so I know this room is full of worshiping and praising women. Praising women. So there is joy in this place today. There is joy in the house today. And as I said to the women that were here last night, you are not here by chance. Maybe you've been to every conference. Maybe this is your first. Maybe this is your first time in a church. I don't know what your story is, but 100% of you that are in this room today, you are here by divine, divine assignment from God. There's something he has for you today. So we welcome you. We have a couple of gift baskets that we want to give. Nettie, if you could grab that. Now, I heard a bunch of people lost their tickets and they had to receive new ones. You guys take this much too seriously. You can be seated for a couple of minutes. And um, let's hope that on the first try, it was one of those original tickets. Hey. Grab your ticket. Grab your ticket. All right. 687820. Congratulations. Everyone loves gifts. Congratulations. Um, there's another gift basket we have here. Nettie, you can come back. Nettie is back and forth. You get a lot of steps in your phone today, girl. I hope you have it on you. Get credit for those steps. Today is a really special day in the life of a, a very, very dear friend. An African term for a very, very close friend is shamari. Has anyone ever heard shamari? We learned that from Dr. Wins, one of our mentors, many, many years ago, shamari. And I have a shamari that is here today that has helped and seen me through a lot of stuff that had to do with medical stuff. She, she was my advocate. She spoke up for me when I had back surgeries and I had different things happening that I needed an advocate. This was a, she's a doctor. Her and her husband are both doctors. And today's her birthday. And because it falls on women of Judah, where are you, Ruth? Where are you? For you. So come get this. She is my shamwari. My shamwari. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. So this morning we have 12 senior pastor's wives here. Can you stand? We want to clap and honor you. Senior pastor's wives. You are special people. You are really special people. And I can say that because I'm one and I know I'm a very special person. So we honor you and the work that you do for the kingdom of God. It is not always easy. It is fruitful, but not always easy. So we honor you. Thank you for coming to this conference this weekend. We have 28 teen girls here today. 28! Yeah! I want to see the teen girls stand. Let me see all the teens. Yeah! Awesome! You girls all totally rock. We love you girls. 
Charles. Maybe some of you I have not met personally, but I know I love you already. And we know you are going to be blessed today, girls. All ages, but we're super psyched that these teen girls are here to hear Jennifer's story today. 54 churches represented today. That is so wonderful. I love that. That blesses my heart because Denominational walls are nonsense. We are all sisters in Christ on the same journey and serving the same God. And so we're excited when we see so many different denominations and churches coming together. So we honor all of you churches for being here. Thank you. I have to tell you our offering total for last night, but I always need a drum roll. <laughs> I wanted to text Matt and Stephanie last night, but it was too late. I wanted to text them and say, this is what we're doing for you guys. But here's the thing. We keep that link open for two weeks. If you weren't here last night, project, um, our project for this year, Friday Night Offering, went to, um, it's called Rescue One. And they have homes in India, Philippines, Mexico, and they are rescuing sex trafficked children. And they are caring for them all the way through their college. So that's something, if you're interested in giving to that, you can find the link on our site or on our Facebook page, um, Rescue One, from last night. But we appreciate all that you have given, and we are going to round that way up. And so if we go over another amount, we're still going to round it way up. We keep rounding it way up as a representation of you girls here in this region. So thank you for that. Um, before we have just a brief video announcement, and then Pastor Maureen will come and take an offering for today. I want to read just a little bit about Jennifer Strickland for those that maybe weren't here last night or those that came and you're not even sure what's happening today. This is what's happening. She will be speaking very soon and this afternoon as well after lunch. Jennifer Strickland is a, is a wife, mother, author, speaker, and the host of the I Am A Woman podcast. As a former professional model who appeared in Vogue, Glamour, Cosmopolitan, and walked the runway for Giorgio Armani, Jennifer understands the lies the media tells girls about their beauty and worth. Mm. Jennifer is a TEDx speaker and the author of Beautiful Lies, Girl Perfect, and More Beautiful Than You Know. Her ministry, You Are More, creates resources that teach women and girls their value, identity, and purpose in Christ. Val is here with her assistant. You might have met her out at the table. Please go back and avail yourself during the lunchtime. And, um, and then at the end of this uh, session this afternoon, she has some great products available out there in Bible studies and books. So Jennifer will be ministering both this morning and this afternoon. You don't want to leave during lunch. Sometimes you get a call or sometimes you feel tired. Don't do it. Stay and finish what God began last night. And it's going to continue this morning and this afternoon. So. If you could show the video announcements, Pastor Mike, thank you. Welcome to the 12th Annual Women of Judah Conference. We're so glad you're here, and we have been praying for you and anticipating an exciting and powerful weekend. We want to remind you that Judah means praise, so that makes us all women of praise. We kindly ask that you turn off your cell phone. We want everyone to enjoy the conference without distraction, including you. And while you're doing that, go ahead and log on to your Facebook page and click check in at the Women of Judah conference. Also click the share button to share the live stream on your page. Please avail yourself to the product table in the foyer Jennifer has all her books and study guides for sale right outside these doors. You'll also find Women of Judah and Judah Girl hoodies and t-shirts along with the other products for sale inside the cafe. We've set up a photo area for you to get some fun selfies with your friends. The photo area will be open during the entire conference. All of our sessions will be live streamed on Facebook and it will be available as podcast after the conference. So if you know of anyone that wasn't able to attend the conference, let them know they can still watch live or listen to the messages later. 
perhaps you'll want to go back and listen again yourself to get double blessed. And last, enjoy the conference. We want you to leave feeling refreshed and revived. Feel free to come around the altar to worship and press in for all that God has for you this weekend. The altar is a place to just come in and lay down all the stress and strain of life and just press into Jesus. We love to allow God time to move at the end of our services, so don't be in a hurry to leave. If you need anything, let someone with a conference team badge know and we'll help you in any way that we can. Praise the Lord. How's everyone doing this morning? Amen. Ladies, we so appreciate you being here, really. And we're just trusting that God is doing something new and powerful in each of your lives, in our lives. It was awesome last night. How many know last night was such a powerful, powerful Amen. time in the presence of God? A powerful word from Pastor Lisa, worship team. Yes. Forget it. They were so it was like electric up yes. here yes. last night. It was everyone was the whole thing, uh, auditorium was bouncing. I think here <laughs> in sanctuary here. But each Saturday, we, uh, every year on Saturday, we take an offering to be a blessing. Last night, as you know, as Pastor Lisa just alluded to, we took an uh, Offering for Rescue One project. But today is for the expenses of the conference. And how many know the conference is many, many costs associated with it, right? You have the honorariums, the refreshments, the transportation promo, and many other incidentals. But we charge a minimal fee every year for the Women of Judah Conference so that as many ladies as possible are able to attend. But we want to give you an opportunity today to continue to sow into this ministry, this conference, and the ministry that has been happening for the last two years in Liberia, West Africa. Is that awesome? Yes. God is doing an awesome, awesome thing. And you are part of that, ladies. Your giving is reaching locally and internationally. And we are so thankful for your generosity because you, as you just heard last night, it was just amazing, amazing. Give yourself a hand for the, just your generosity. You've been so faithful in this year after year after year. So Women of Judah, it's all about blessing all the ministries and servants of God. In our hearts, it's to be a blessing, and that's what we do. In many ways, as you see the baskets, we're always blessing people. And we extend an offer to senior pastors, wives, teen challenge, residents, and staff, which they're here again today, and we're so blessed to have them with us this weekend. And also, for many ladies and ministry partners that we help to attend this conference free. And we want to continue to be able to do that. And this offering this morning is what God is able to help us to do. We want to continue to give to those in need and to those that God puts on our hearts to give. So today, as you give, know that you are sowing into a ministry that is reaching here yes. locally, but also internationally. And it's just amazing what God is doing in our midst. So let's stand this morning. We pray a blessing upon you. We know God has so much more for us today. How many received something from the Lord last night? Amen. Well, there's so much more God wants to do this morning and this afternoon. So let's press in. Let's believe God. There's ways to give on the back of the screen here behind me. So, or you can come up and put it in the baskets here. But we just want to pray a blessing on you today as you continue to seek God and see what he has for you. Amen? So, Father, right now, we give you praise, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, bringing us here. And, Father, we're here to worship you, to exalt you, to magnify your name. We are here to seek you this morning because you, we know, God, you desire to just minister to your handmaidens. So, God, I pray blessing upon this offering. I pray blessing upon each one here, God, that their hearts would be open, their ears would be open to hear what your spirit is speaking. 
And Father, that you would just anoint this worship team as they usher you, us into your presence right now. And God, we just pray blessing upon this offering that you would uh, continue to multiply it for your glory. In Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Come forward.
husbands to care for their children, to be the keepers of their home and the guardians at the gate. To stand beside mankind and to contend for mankind. And so we take that calling seriously this morning. And we ask, Father, will you please speak? Can I just step aside and can you have a meeting with your daughters? Thank you, Jesus, for the precious blood. Because it is only by the blood that we enter through the curtain and we get to meet you face to face. It is only by the blood that we are forgiven. It is only by the blood that we are made clean and holy because we're not holy. We're not worthy. But we worship a God who is holy and who is worthy and is contending on behalf of the children of this generation. And we are your Ezra warriors and we are standing on the front lines and we are ready to go to war for you. In Jesus name. Amen. All right, ladies, take a seat with Jen. We're going to pull out the word of God, but before we do, I just want to tell you for a moment a story. I was We didn't go to church. My parents are going to church now. I'll tell you that. But uh, we didn't read the Bible. We didn't really pray. Uh, it was a very moral family. Um, and my parents had the difficult situation of raising a very independent and very klutzy girl. I was tall from a young age. My long limbs was concerned that I would not stand up straight. And so she found a little modeling school in my town when I was eight years old and they were having a charm class and they really do have you put the book on the head and walk down and learn. And I still am learning to stand up straight. But at the time, I didn't know my beauty or my worth or the word of God. And so at 17 years old, I got a modeling contract and was shipped off to Europe, kind of like sending a young girl out into the sea of sharks just to see if she can swim. The agencies promised my mom that they would watch over me and they would protect me, which turned out to be a total lie. Uh, but at 17 years old, I, I worked over in Germany and Italy and Milan and Paris and Australia, New Zealand, New York, Miami, Hollywood. Uh, until I was about 22 years old. I was starving myself. I was struggling with anorexia and working for Giorgio Armani over on the runways of Milan. And I thought that once I had arrived at that place, that my, my family, my father would be proud of me. And my family was proud of me. And they took all my modeling pictures and made a big collage on the wall at home above my mother's sewing machine. I later demanded she take them all down. She was very distressed by that. But she later came to understand that the business took her little girl and her little girl's heart and, and, and wrung it out like a rag. And so by the time I was working for Armani, I was using drugs and alcohol, I was struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts when people on the streets of Europe reached out to me and told me about Jesus. Mm. It happened in Italy, it happened in Munich, it happened in uh, <laughs> several different cities and countries and if girls and women, if you want to read a crazy amazing story about street creatures who saved a girl from hell, you can read my book, Girl Perfect, uh, which is on the table. We've just done a new, uh, a new edition for the girls of this generation, of social media yes. generation. Yes. And women of all ages love this story because it's about a hurting girl. And all of us have been that girl at one time. I was actually uh, living in Munich, doing in Germany, and doing catalogs. At, I, I kind of I ended up losing all my jobs in Italy because I started breaking out in terrible acne 
I was starving myself. I was, my hair was falling out. I had dark circles under my eyes. I had all kinds of digestive problems. And I, I began not looking like the girl in my pictures. And so they would shame me for that on the job. And they would, you know, criticize my, my pimples or my bruises or that I was too skeletal for one and not skinny enough for the other. And, and so I ended up losing my jobs in Italy because of my outward appearance. And I moved to Germany because basically girls could do cheap catalogs for good money. And I thought, well, you know what? I may not be end up with uh, the runway anymore. I've done that. Maybe I'll just make money and make as much money as I possibly can in this business before I get the out, you know? And, and so in Germany, I was actually walking down the street on the way to a, a job when this, this silver haired gentleman just stopped me in the middle of the street in Munich. And he was one of a whole series of people who literally stopped me in the street. But this man was older gentleman with these bright blue eyes and he looked like he was literally out of time. He was wearing knickers and something that looked like a German waistcoat. He had a bicycle, a black bicycle behind him. And when he stopped me in the street, I immediately said, oh, no speck and see Deutsch, because I had been grabbed in the street, followed in the street, drugged by photographers, pursued, you name it, it had happened, spit on. It had all happened. And so when this man first stopped me on the street, I said, oh, no speck and see Deutsch, which is really sad, because that's not even how you say I don't speak German, but I, that's the best I could do, no speck and see Deutsch. And he says, oh, parlez français. And I said, hablas espanol. <laughs> and he's like, parlez russo, do you speak Russian? I'm like, oh. and finally he goes, uh, uh, my dear, what are you doing here? Aww. He said to me, and I never told people that I was modeling in Europe because I knew that, you know, I, knew that I was selling my soul. Mm. I knew that mm. for a price. But I wanted that money, and I wanted that trouble, and I wanted that, that glamour. I wanted the story of the girl who was a small town in California, went off to Europe and made her dreams come true. I wanted that image. But I never really told people that's what I was doing here, so I felt immediately ashamed. And he says, are you traveling here? Are you studying here? And I'm like, no, no. And then he sees I'm holding my portfolio and he says, oh no, my dear, you are not modeling here, are you? And I said, yes, I am. And he says, and they have hurt you, haven't they? Now I had just been through a, a, a terrible experience with a photographers in, in Italy that literally made me want to die. So when he said to me, they have hurt you, haven't they? I immediately began, tears just kind of rushed to my eyes. Who is this strange dude on the side of the road mm -hmm. with these bright blue eyes and this black bicycle? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, yeah. And he said, where are you going right now? I said, I'm going to a casting. He says, what's that? I said, I'm going to show the guy my pictures. He decides if he wants to hire me. He said, you go to them so they can use you like you are a piece of furniture? This is disgusting. Go home. <laughs> I'm very stubborn. I'm going to make money, girl. Are you kidding me? I'm going to travel. I'm going to see Europe. I have plans. He says, you want to see something? Fine. Go to Zugspitz. It's the highest mountain in all of Munich. But then, go home. <laughs> and I said, well, I can't do that. And he said, my dear, you cannot sell beauty. Mm -hmm. You cannot sell your face. Turn around now. Go back the way that you came. Never again will you go to them for money. But someday, many will come to you to hear what you have to say. Wow. And he took my shoulders and he patted me on my way. <laughs> First thing I did is I went to a kiosk and bought myself some Snickers bars, some burgers, and some fries. <laughs> you know, I'm the same. I mean, last night we were in chicken and fries at like 11 o'clock. I was like, if I'm not modeling, I'm eating. <laughs> and I will have
have a photo. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I took my modeling portfolios and put them in a suitcase. And some people on the streets, like I said, it's all in the story of Girl Perfect, but some people on the streets of Munich had given me a Bible. And I took that good news Bible and I went and fasted and prayed and I went to Zugspitz, mm -hmm. the highest mountain in all of Munich. Mm -hmm. I didn't get all the way to the top, you know what I mean? It's winter in Germany and mm -hmm. I was very skinny and cold. <laughs> but I got to a plateau. I feel like right now maybe someone in this room is at a plateau. Is at a place where you have to make a choice. Are you gonna keep living the way that you're living? Or are you gonna give Jesus a chance? And as I began to read the word for the very first time, I began to see <laughs> who he was. It's interesting that in Germany, in the forest of Germany, there are crosses nailed to the trees. And on every bend of that trial to that plateau, I saw him. Nailed, wooden crosses nailed to the trees. Let me show you what beauty is. Let me show you what love looks like. You want success. You want happiness, you want riches, you want wisdom, you want wealth, you want freedom. Amen. It's on the cross. Amen. Amen. And I laid down in the snow on this plateau and I thought to myself, we did not have cell phones, okay? <laughs> Don't even think anyone could track me. Never. Nobody could ever track me. But he was tracking me. Yes, he was. <laughs> he was following me. <laughs> And I lay down in the snow and I remember thinking, you know, I'm, I was hungry and I was tired and I was sick and you know, I put so many substances in my body and I thought I could just die right here. You know, nobody even knows where I am. My mother doesn't even know where I am. I could fall asleep in the snow. Mm -hmm. Or I could give Jesus a chance. Amen. Amen. I feel like there's somebody in this room today that needs to give Jesus a chance. Amen. And so we're going to do some business real quick. Can you guys just close your Father God, I remember that day when I opened the window of my heart and I said, okay, I can also believe that maybe you see me and maybe you know my pain and maybe you know my story and maybe you know the things that I've done to harm myself and the things that people did to harm me. And if there is anyone in this room who feels that way and is wondering, does God see me? Does he know me? Does he forgive me? Does he even want me? The answer to that question is yes. And so ladies, if there is anybody in this room that has not given Christ a chance and has not asked God to come into the window of your heart and sweep it clean and make you new, I pray that you would raise your hand and look at me. And so ladies, with your eyes closed, if there is anybody in this room that needs to make Christ your Lord, will you just look at me? I see you. I said, just look at me because it's okay. It's okay. I didn't know anything about scripture. I just knew I'd been hurt. I see you. I see you. You're brave. And so right now, anybody else, you can just look at me in the eyes. You don't even have to raise your hand. You can just look at me in the eyes if you want to ask Christ to come into your heart. Uh -huh. Thank you. I see you guys. I see you. So right now I want you to put your head down. down, down. We're going to do some business with heaven. Close your eyes and look down. And I want you to say, Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart. I don't know you, but you know me. I don't see you. give you a chance and make you my Lord and Savior. I believe that you died on the cross for me and that you rose again. In Jesus' name, amen. And you ladies are wearing a crown today. I see your tears. 2 Kings 20.
25 says, I see your tears. And I have heard your cries. And I will heal you. Amen. That's good. I had a feeling that we needed to have a couple dollars into the kingdom so we could just have a conversation. You've got to make sure that they understand what I'm talking about. So, you know, the, the message, oh, well, the message today is uh, what are you worshiping? What are you worshiping? Because one of the things about, uh, about women in particular, but our culture, is that we're worshiping the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. And so when, uh, when Lisa told me that was going to be the message, you know, that we were going to talk about worshiping in the midst of the battle, I was thinking about what are we worshiping? By the way, I haven't even said thank you, thank you. Thank you. That's so sweet. Y'all are amazing here. I love you. You dance way more than the Baptists in Texas. <laughs> I'm like, these women have been set free. <laughs> need to hang out with the assemblies of God a little bit. I really like you guys. My favorite. Uh, so, for a girl that never grew up in church, it's interesting to watch. Let me tell you. Uh, but I love traveling around and, and, and seeing the kingdom and, and what God has done. You know, and what God continues to do among women. But anyway, so I was thinking about what are we worshiping? And, you know, one of the things that women worship is man. We worship man. And that's part of what it says in Genesis is that our curse after the fall would be that we would desire for man to lord over him and he would want to control us. And so there's this thing with women. It's part of the fall that we would desire man. To give us our value. And that's exactly what I did as a child. I looked to the my father or the boys at school or the guys in college or the man standing on the other side of the camera to give me worth. And if they said I was worthy, if they said I was beautiful, if they said I was valuable, I believed them. But, you know, man will change his mind about you. Anybody ever have a man change his mind about you? Or a girl, right? Because we compare ourselves also to other girls, and we use girls as this measuring stick for our worth. Am I worthy? Am I beautiful? Am I valuable? Well, if he doesn't see me, I'm not. If, if I'm not as good as her, I'm not. So I grew up comparing myself to the other models. She got the job. What's wrong with me? I got the job. She hates me for that. Right, right. These girls would give me nasty looks when I came home from the Armani shows. Because why? They starved themselves, left school, left everything for this. And they wouldn't they didn't measure up. But it was the very next season that Armani changed his mind about me, put his hands around my waist, I had gained four pounds. Kicked me right off his runway. I mean, you, the, a man will love you one day and, and praise you one day and not the next. I had a photographer in uh, Germany tell me that I was so ugly, insecure, anorexic, and whatever else, that he could not take pictures of me. And in German, ugly means hated. So when a girl in Germany is called ugly, she's called hated. And he says this to me in front of the whole crew. See, one day I was perfectly beautiful and they all wanted me, but then the next day I'm not. And I'm so grateful that God took away my outward appearance to help me find him. Yes. Right? Yes. And he does that. It's completely biblical. And it's Isaiah 3. It's a, Isaiah 3. He take, puts sores on the faces of the women of Zion when they get their, uh, their attitude from their clothes and their jewelry and their appearance. He will humble you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Better to humble yourself before the Lord than to be humbled by him. I learned that. So sometimes we, we get our identity from man, but what does the Bible say? Because if you get your identity from man, even your husband, you're going to be on a roller coaster ride your entire life. That's right. Yeah. He's in a good mood, you're in a good mood. You mirror him. Yeah. And man becomes your mirror. And many of us, our deepest wounds are from the words of man or from other women. 
But what does the word of God say about man? And I'm teaching today from beautiful lies, which is what you guys got in your conference ticket. But just so you know, there is a Bible study that goes with it. And this, if you want to go deeper in your identity in Christ, I really recommend, I really recommend you grab this. Okay, the beautiful life study guide. It's only ten dollars just to look at what does the Bible say about right. man. Right. The right. Bible says so much about man. Mm-hmm. Man is but as mist; his days are like a fleeting shadow. It says here in the Psalms. It says, "Do not put your trust in princes, in mortal men who cannot save. When their spirits depart, they return to the ground, and on that day, their very plans come to nothing." But blessed is she whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord is God, the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. The Lord who remains faithful. You see in Psalm 144, David says, oh, Lord, what is man? He asked the question, what is man? Because men were always pursuing him. And or they're rejecting, right? It's either pursuit or rejection, pursuit or rejection. And we can live our whole lives looking for that kind of approval. And it will make you sick. Yes. So David says, what is man that you should care for him, the son of man? And God answers him. Man is like a breath. His days are like a fleeting shadow. Proverbs 29, 25 says the fear of man will prove to, prove to be a snare. What's a snare? It's a noose. The fear of man will prove to be a noose. Many of us are not speaking about what is happening to the children of this generation right. because we are enslaved by the fear of man. I've come here to set us free from that today. Because our days are but a mist. And we are called to train and teach the next generation who he is and what he requires and what his word says. Because this is what we're called. We were called to a lost and confused generation. So they're only going to get more confused. True. And it's going to take us. Yes. The fear of man will be a noose, a snare. It'll always, always hold you yes. back. Yes. Yes. It, will, it will catch your feet in a net where you cannot move forward in who God calls you to be. But what happens when you turn away from the fear of man and you look to God? You know, Mary, the mother of Jesus, is a perfect example. You know, she was 12 to 14 years old when she became pregnant with Jesus. And in her day, it was normal for girls to get engaged that young and to begin bearing children. But it was not okay that it was out of wedlock. She could have been stoned. Right. She could have responded with the fear of man. It's my body, my choice. Oh, boy. Yep. Mm-hmm. She could have said, no, what do people think of me? Oh, my gosh, we have to hide this. We have to get rid of this problem. But what does she say when the angel comes to her? He says, do not be afraid, Mary, for you are highly favored with God. Amen. When you look, okay, when you look. At at the outward, for your identity and for your value, it's always going to be changing. Always. Your body, people's opinions, the media, the standards of the media. Anorexia was chic in my day. Transgenderism is chic today. It's always going to change. And you're on this roller coaster ride. But when Mary turned to the angel, she found out who she was. Amen. You only find out who you are in the mirror of who God is. Amen. Amen. That's right. And so he comes and says, you are highly favored, not among people, right. but among him. Right. Yes. And you are not alone, he says to her. Basically, he says, the Holy Spirit is going to be with you. And in response of him saying, you are, she said, I am. Right. Yes. That's how identity works. God says, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You are my daughter. I am your daughter. You are saved. I am saved. That's how it works with God. But you have to turn your eyes away from the mirror of man 
and look into the mirror of God. When we see the woman caught in adultery in the scriptures, she's shamed. She's, she sinned. People are judging her. People are condemning her. In fact, the word the scriptures use is condemned. So she's standing among all these people who are saying, you are condemned. Yeah. We can stone you for this sin. They don't bring the man to the center of town. It takes two to tango, but whatever. The story of women. We wear the shit. We wear the A. Right? So she's the one left to carry the shame. She's the one condemned. But what does Jesus say? Jesus sits down in the dust and stands up and defends her and says, She is forgiven. The rest of you prideful religious people can just go on your way. That's right. That's right. Right. And so she looks to him. If she's looking to the crowd, she's condemned. But if she looks to Christ, she is forgiven. Amen. You are. I am. That is how identity works. If you look at the bleeding woman of Mark 5, you see there was a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years. Okay, in the days before Tampax. Okay? It's like, wow. That is a mess. She hears that Jesus has come to her town. Now, the bleeding woman of Mark 5, you can study these stories in my books, but think about this. She had tried everything. She had right. spent all of her money, right. all of her money on doctors and only gotten worse. And what does Jesus call her when she comes to him? Daughter. Men would reject her. Yep. She was considered unclean yes. in her day, yes. out of the camp because she yes. was bleeding. She was rejected. I am rejected, and also I'm sick. Mm -hmm. You know, this generation wants to put a diagnosis on every girl yes. with any yes. imperfection. Yes. I'm sick. You're this. You're that. You're bipolar. You're depressed. You're this. You're that. She must have been like, I'm worthless. I'm dirty. I'm unclean. And I'm unlovable. And no one's going to touch me. And no one's going to love me in this way. And what is Jesus when she looks away and she pushes through the crowd? She stops looking to the crowd. She stops looking to the doctors. And she starts looking for the healer. And he said, he, she's looking now to the healer. And he says, healed. Yes. You're healed. Yes. You're well. Yes. So when you look to the crowd, you're going to get a lot of diagnosis. Mm -hmm. But when you look to the healer, you're going to find out you can be well. Yes. Are you kidding me? You can be well? In a generation where they're medicating every single kid. What does the Bible say about that? It says in Revelations, the whole world will be deceived by the pharmacia, by the pharmaceuticals. The whole world will be deceived by the drugs, by the hormones, by the pill. That's the Bible says the whole world will be deceived by the pharmacia. The Bible says, which is witchcraft. Seriously. And so what are we doing with these daughters who are bleeding inside, who are hurting inside, and giving them these titles? When if they only understood that they have a great position, that they have a healer, and they don't have to make agreements with all of that. You don't have to make agreements with all of that. You have an ability to be set free, really by Jesus alone, mm -hmm. and then let him lead you from there. Mm -hmm. But you have to stop looking to the crowd. And maybe even the people, maybe even the doctors, at times, you know, there's nothing against doctors, we all love our doctors, sometimes. Mm -hmm. But they're not always right. Mm -hmm. He is the healer. Yes. And he is the one with the power to heal the bleeding. And the rejection. 
and the suffering. You know, in, in, in the story of the bleeding woman of Mark 5, it says that she had been suffering for many years. You know that word suffering it means scourge. She'd been whipped in the soul. Mm -hmm. It is the same word the Bible says that Jesus experienced on the cross. Mm -hmm. the scourging of the soul. Mm -hmm. That he took the penalty for every woman had been blamed and shamed. He absorbed all of our sin on that cross. What a good and awesome God. The sinful woman who comes to him and anoints him before his burial, everybody's judging her. She's judged. They call her sinful. Jesus calls her loved. He calls her forgiven. You always find out who you are in the mirror of who he is. Right. Amen. Yes. And then there are great men like the man on the street, you know, who, who, who turned me around, who turned my feet yes. on yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and showed me the way to the Father. Yes. And those are the kind of men that you need to surround yourself. The ones who gently turn your face away from them as your mirror and turn your face to the Father who calls you daughter. Who calls you daughter. The word daughter in the Hebrew means one who would continue the family line. It's a high calling. Yes. It's a high calling. If women are not worshiping man, they're worshiping themselves. They're worshiping the mirror. And this is on steroids right, with TikTok right. and Instagram. Right. Worship me, look at me, like me. Right. Isn't right. that like, did, are we aware right. that Ezekiel 38 says that Satan himself wanted to be worshipped, that he was the model of perfection, perfect right. in beauty? Mm -hmm. That's what the Bible says about Satan. That he wanted everyone to look at him. He was supposed to guard the throne. He wanted to be the one on the throne. He wanted to be the one. Look at me. Look at how great I am. Look at how beautiful I am. Look at how talented I am. Look, I have this musical talent. I'm, the Bible teaches that he was rich in wisdom and gifts and talents and beauty and wealth and all of these things. But the pride of his heart became, he became proud like I did. On the account of his beauty. And so God reduced him to ashes on the ground. So we're going to crush his feet. We're going to get, uh, crush him under our feet. We're going to get to that later. But the truth is, the God of this age, the scriptures teach, is in, he is the prince of this world. And he is teaching girls and women to be just obsessed with the mirror. Right? It's like Snow White, you know, right. and her mother, the slave in the mirror. Right? <laughs> right? And she summons him from, from furthest darkness, the, the, the mother of Snow White. She looks in the mirror, and from the fire, she goes, slave in the mirror, I summon thee from furthest darkness. And there's a man with the flames. <laughs> and she's like, mirror, mirror. On the wall, and she's so obsessed with herself, she cannot see that she's been called to steward a daughter into the kingdom. And that is really it began. What's happening with the kids now began with our generation, our mother's generation, obsessed with plastic surgery. What they're doing to kids now is what the women started doing. The women started saying, I'm not enough the way that you made me. You know, you look in that mirror, and that mirror is always changing. Even when I lived with the girls in the modeling industry, Vogue cover models, Calvin Klein. I lived with a Calvin Klein model. She was, got a million-dollar contract with Calvin Klein, 14 years old. 14. By the time she was 18, she had gotten curvy. And back then, it wasn't chic to have boobies. Is chic wow. now, but in our day it was not. Wow. And she used to stand in front of the mirror and shake the cellulite on the back of her butt and be like, I hate this wow. cigarette hanging out of her mouth. She would party all night, do drugs all night, 
sleep with the photographer. She was in debt. She had lost the whole million by the time she was 18 years old. Beauty comes and goes. But when we would look in the mirror, we would only see the flaw. And people don't think that about, about models. They think, oh my gosh, they're what flaw? Are you kidding me? I can tell you every flaw. You want to see my flaw? I can tell you my flaw. It's the first thing we see right. often right. as women. Right. And when we look at that mirror and we look at the self, we're always changing. Mm -hmm. Some of you young girls, you're looking as good as you're ever going to get, babe. I'm just telling you. It's like downhill, like savvy. Like think about your grandmother in a bikini. She don't look like you in a bikini. It's always going to be changing. It's always going to be changing. So when we get our identity from how, how we look, I mean, how does that really work? I knew a girl who got a terrible, beautiful girl who got a terrible virus right before she got married, six months before she got married. They had to cut off her arms and her legs. And her husband's been carrying her and strapping them on ever since. What if we told her her body was her value? Right. What if we told her her beauty was her value? Where does that leave her? Right, right. It is always right, right. going to be changing, and it can be taken from us like that. Yes, yes. So either you live on a roller coaster ride of how bad I look, how great I look, or you turn and you look into the mirror of God yes. for Him to tell you who you yes. are. Yes. And doesn't He say in Isaiah 64 8, I am the Lord, your Father, you are the clay. I am the potter. You are the work of my hand. Mm. Now, this is interesting because you were talking about Psalm 139, how he knit us together. There's also this picture biblically that he created us on the potter's wheel. Yes. Mm. That we are the clay. Mm -hmm. He is the potter. And what's really cool about the potter's wheel is that if the vase is like getting all lopsided and messed up like we all do, he just lumps you back down. We can do better. Right, right. And so he lumps you all back down. You're just a lump of clay. And then he begins to spin you on the potter's wheel. And he begins to give you those, to help you see that on the inside you have these gifts. And you have these talents. And you have these abilities. And they are gifts from God. You can't see that in a mirror. And he begins to carve inside of you the things that man cannot see. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says, Man looks at the outward appearance, but God sees the heart. And so he puts, he deposits it's so much inside of your heart if you would only allow him to be the one to fill that pot. To money to fill the pot. We go to men to fill, fill the pot. We go to Instagram to fill the pot. We go to followers to fill the pot. We go to money. We go, we go back to money again. We go back to men again. We go back to people's opinions again. We go back to the mirror. We go back to the scale. And all along, he's saying, I can fill that pot. I can fill you with that light. You want to be radiant? You don't need microdermabrasion. It's not a bad thing. But... <laughs> Skin scraping, whatever, laser, but all that. He's like, you want to be radiant? The Bible says those that look to him are radiant. Right. That's Their right. faces are never covered with shame. <laughs> I had trouble with acne again years after I left the modeling industry, but it was like 10 times worse. And I was like, well, this isn't really working. I'm now a mother of two young children. I'm trying to write a book about beauty, and I got struck with pimples. This doesn't work. <laughs> I go and I get this peel. I'm like, look, I have all the cystic. I would get these cystic, cystic pimples. So badly. They are on my forehead. They're all over my chin. Coming down my neck. I go to this lady. I'm like, give me, give me the pill. Give me the peel, the pill, the wash, the medicine. Because I'm, I'm, I'm going to wow. speak to these girls about beauty, and I can have all these pimples. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you like a scrub, like a peel. She peel my face off. <laughs> okay. I go home, my children were like, <gasps> my husband was like, ah. I'm like, I have more than my skin. <laughs> I go to this other doctor, I'm like, 
I mean, I, the, Dr. Murad. I mean, Hollywood, the best. I'm like, Dr. Murad. Okay, the, 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 the big famed dermatologist. Give me the pill. Give me the peel. Give me the wash. He sends me to his esthetician, and she says, you know what, sweetheart? You have something that makes you believe that if you're not perfect, you're not loved. She shows me a picture of the skin with the ventricles of the mind and the heart that go to the skin. And she says, sweetheart, your issue is so deep, it needs to heal here. And I'm like, give me the pill, give me the pill. <laughs> she gave me nothing. She said, you know what, sweetheart? Why don't you just not look in the mirror for a while? I left, I called my mom on the way home, and I said, you didn't give me the pill. <laughs> my skin is peeling off for this crazy lady treatment. I got acne, like, I got like 40, 50 cystic pimples on my face when I was writing the first version of Girl Perfect. Oh boy. I left that place, I, I didn't look in the mirror for 40 days. I went on a fast from the mirror. And he showed me all the truths that are in the Girl Perfect Bible study for girls, all the truths of what his word says. I began, so the lady said, do what you love for a little while. I wake up in the morning and I would just, those that look to him are reading. Three four, three, four weeks into my fast, I was dropping my little boy off at preschool, and his, his preschool teacher knew that, you know, I was just an absolute wreck, covered with sores all over my face. And it was three, four weeks. I had not looked in the mirror. I had not looked in a rearview mirror. I had not looked in a reflection in a store window. I had not looked in the mirror. I had to have been looking a mess. She looks at me after three weeks into my fast. She goes, you look radiant. What have you been doing? And I was like, oh, it's not the pill. <laughs> it's not the wash. It's not the peel. It's not the treatment. It's true. Yeah. Those that looked at him are radiant. Right. The faces are never covered with right. Pretty awesome. Yes. So when we begin to turn away from the mirror and look into the mirror of his word, we discover that God never changes his mind about us. Mm -hmm. That a mirror will always be changing. People will always be changing. The crowd will always be changing. The trend will always be changing. The media will always be changing. But he never changes. Every single day he says, I am the potter. You are the pot. You are the work of my hand. Amen. And we have a generation of kids following in our generation's footsteps. Yes. Which are saying, um... No, you didn't, you didn't make me right. Mm. Isaiah 45 speaks of this. He says, does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Mm. Does your work say you have no hands? You don't know what you're doing. Woe to him. Woe. When the Bible says woe, it means like woe. Like woe. Like woe. <laughs> he says, woe to him who quarrels with his maker. Woe to him who quarrels with his father and says, what have you begotten? Or with his mother and says, what have you brought to birth? Mm. This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and its maker concerning things to come. Do you question me about my children? Mm. The work of my hand? Mm. Are you saying I didn't know that I made a mistake? Making you male, making you female, making you tall, making you short, making you a double D or a B. <laughs> He's like, are you quarreling with me? Because you are the work of my hand. And woe to the one who says to his maker, I don't like what you made in me. And we got a generation of kids doing that and a bunch of adults affirming it. You're right. You must be born in the wrong body. Yeah. Let's give you some pharmacia. Let's give you some witchcraft. Let's give you some pill. Let's give you some injection. Let's give you some surgery. You're right. You're not right. You're right. You're not. You're right. You're not right. Uh-uh. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. 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 Whoa to the one who. Woe to us if when we have done this. 
He said, it is I who made the earth and created mankind upon it. My own hand stretched out the heavens. When's the last time your doctor did that? Have <laughs> you stretched out the heavens? Uh, no, but I got a degree. I'm just saying. <laughs> he says, I marshaled the starry hosts. Yes, he, yes. He, he told them, he told every star, you there, you there, yeah. you there, you there. Yeah. He said, oh, woe to them, quarrels with this maker. 2 Corinthians 4, 18 teaches us, yeah, I don't have time to get into that. So if you guys want to go deeper into issues of your body image and what the Bible says about your body and beauty and identity, you've got to do the girl program, you've got to do the study guide and the girl program study guide. You've got to go deeper. But this is the other thing that he says to us about women you know when we go back to the beginning okay we're, we're we're in a culture right now that is saying what is a woman cute question oh okay that's no problem we can answer that can we can you can you tell your daughters exactly what a woman is because we're going to have to preserve it for the next generation. This is not time to be on the sideline. This is not time to sit lazy on the couch and eat potato chips. Is get up, hit the floor, work out, pray, go. It is go time. It is go time for the daughters of the family. It's go time. You see, Grandma, I'm here to in a wheelchair. You get up, you go. Right. I'm telling right. you, yes. I am telling you, we yes. need your wisdom. Yes, yes. We, do. we need what you have. Yes, we, do. we need what you have. Mm -hmm. So when God, you know, began to, uh, wait, what, okay, so we were talking about worshiping me, I'm worshiping me. Okay, I know what I'm going. Okay, sorry. When God tells me to skip a bunch of things, I just have to catch up. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So. When we turn and we begin to worship him instead of what the culture is saying, and he tells us who we are, what does he say a woman really is? What does he say in his word? Well, first of all, we know from Genesis that from the very beginning, God created man, male and female in his image. He created them in his image and in his likeness. We know from the very beginning, Genesis 1-1, God, which uses, by the way, uh, is a masculine term, okay? God created the spirit. It's a feminine term in the original Hebrew. God, masculine. Spirit, feminine. God created the spirit hover. That's us. We hover. We move. We move. God created man, build woman, fill with life. So from the beginning, God created the spirit Hovered. The word of God was there. God, the Holy Spirit, Jesus is there from the very beginning. And then he says, we will create them in our likeness. In our likeness. So the only they is that they. Yeah. That is the they. Yeah. That was God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. That's why the enemy is trying to take that pronoun. He is the they. So God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit creates us, male and female, in his likeness. To do what? To reflect him. Then we see in Genesis 2 that God gives Adam, mankind, a command. And this is where we're going to close. When God gave Adam a command, what did he say to him? It's not good. For you to be alone. You're going to need someone to help you in a way that you cannot help right. yourself. Right, right. Okay, this 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 right. helper suitable thing that they've got here, let me just show you. <clears throat> if you look at the original, the first translation of the Old Testament, it says a vital helper who is as strong as him. Similar to him, like him. So when God created Adam and he gave him a command, look, eat from the abundance. 
eat from the abundance. Or there's this other tree, and I'm going to give you a choice, but don't eat from that tree. Immediately, that's when the creation of woman came. He said, you know what? You can't go it alone. It's not good for an alcoholic to be alone. It's not good for an addict to be alone. It's not good for a depressed girl to be alone. It's not good for a man to be alone. We are not created to be alone. Even the Proverbs say that a fool isolates himself. Isolation. Look at what it's done. It's no good for men to be alone. And he says, he says, looks at all the animals. And he says, the, the problem here, uh-oh, Houston, we got a problem. <laughs> it's the first problem in the garden. It's like, there's not one like him to help him, to protect him, to shield him, to, to, to guide him, to, 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 to befriend him, to be side by side and, and, face, by, and face to face. He says, he needs an azar. What does those words mean in the Hebrew? What is a woman? In the, in, in the Bible, the word ezer is used 22 times. And every, almost every single time, I think it's 19 out of 22 times, it is used in a sense of a warrior. A warrior. When the Psalms say, I look to the hills, where does my help come from? The Lord is my helper. That is the same word God uses to create woman. He's going to need an azer. The Bible teaches us that we cry out for help. We cry out for the azer. It is a warrior spirit. It is a warrior spirit that will war on his behalf. That will contend on the behalf of mankind. That who is created from his side. God created man from the soul. To work the earth. He created us from mankind. To serve mankind. To help him. To shield him like a rib would shield a heart. Like a rib would shield the internal delicate organs. What is a woman? She is an Isaiah warrior. She is one who will help the, the man and help her friends and help the children will help humanity. We were created to shield humanity from the lies of the enemy. Amen. Bless Eve. She fell down on the job. She made an agreement with the enemy. She agreed with him that God didn't say what he said. And so they end up outside of the garden. But all of that comes back together when Mary Magdalene and John meets with Jesus in the garden again. Who did he, what is the first word Jesus said when he rose? Woman. Mm-hmm. Woman. Our relationship is restored. Amen. Mary was crying in the garden. He had just been crucified. And the stone had been rolled away and he was missing and he was gone and immediately she hears this voice that says woman Jesus knew what that meant you are a warrior you are an Azar you're created to announce the resurrection of mankind you are created to support and to help mankind I picked you on purpose Says. That's right. We are created in his likeness, yes. in his image, yes. to support, uphold, build up, protect, contend for mankind. To contend for the our husbands and the men at our side. We are not under their feet, we are not over their head. And you know what's really awesome is when male and female, man and woman come together as one. Oh, we are unstoppable. That's 
That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. The difference between the feminists still and what we have going in the kingdom, <laughs> we stand side by side. That's right. right. That's, That's right. right. We stand yeah. face to face with yeah. him. That's right. We contend for him. Yeah. That's we right. contend for the family. That's we contend right. for the children. That's yes. right. Together, mm, we make up the image of God, and yes. it is yeah. an all-consuming fire. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we are going to win this battle. Yes. Yes. So, Father God, I just thank you so much that when we turn away from the mirror of man, the bathroom mirror, the scale, the crowd, the opinions of people, and all the things, that you tell us who we are. That we are warriors. We are helpers. We are aides to help those that cannot help themselves at times, just the way you have helped us. Help us to grow into the true meaning. door to go into the cafe and just wolf that food down. If the lady next to you is not eating fast enough, eat her food and then get back in here. Lord, thank you for the food. Thank you for the hands that have prepared it. Thank you for the men that are serving us. God, we appreciate their work and their commitment to this conference. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Amen. Go out patiently and make sure to be back in here at one. Bless you guys.